the need for a public inquiry into the death of Shane O'Farrell. Um, Pepe O'Leary, with one minute each. I'll be as direct as possible. I think it's been clearly demonstrated that Shane O'Farrell was failed by multiple arms of the state in terms of uh, justice agencies. Uh, and his tragic death was, I believe, avoidable uh, had those agencies done their job correctly. Now, Minister, you have uh, the, the Doyle and now the Shannon have voted in favour of a public inquiry. You have put together a process uh, under uh, Justice Gerard Houghton, uh, a scoping exercise. Now, as has been demonstrated by the journalist Michael Clifford, this was not considered necessary uh, when a process, when an inquiry was put together for Bill Keneally the Bill Keneally case, for the IBRC case, or to investigate the recording of phone conversations in Garda stations, any amount of examples. I think that it was very clear that there was, uh, the need for a public inquiry was clearly demonstrated uh, and that you should have proceeded directly to that. And I am concerned at the terms of reference that you have outlined for Justice Gerard Houghton. I think you should have consulted with the family before uh, giving them uh, to the Justice. And I will, uh, I will pick up on some of those points again in my supplement. Uh, uh, Shane O'Farrell's mother, Lucy, Lucia, uh, speak with great sadness and eloquence in prime time uh, last week, um, and again make, I think, an unanswerable case, Minister, for uh, a full public inquiry. Uh, clearly, both houses of this are octus. We voted for that. Uh, we want it overwhelmingly. A young man who should still be alive and, and, and uh, would have been had the criminal justice system and certain guardy uh, done their, their, their jobs properly. And of course, uh, the, the, that's the crux of the matter. Uh, Zygmantis. Uh, Jusiska, who was driving the car that killed Shane on the 2nd of uh, August 2011, uh, and just an hour before, of course, he killed him. Uh, he, 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 he had a car that no NCT, no valid insurance. He'd been stopped by the Guardian allowed to continue driving. And we know, of course, he uh, breached bail 18 times, had had 42 previous con uh, convictions and a, a history of, of uh, heroin abuse. Now, we've had another scoping exercise. We had that in my own constituency, Minister, several times, uh, you know, on the stardust. Uh, we should have gone directly. Uh, I know there's an eight-week time frame and so on and so forth, but this is um, nine years, eight years, nine years uh, for a family looking for justice. Please listen to them uh, and, and commit to a full public Thank inquiry. You, Thanks, Jan. It's seven and a half years since uh, Shane O'Farrell was killed unnecessarily, and I think it's indisputable um, um, with a consensus in this House that uh, Shane O'Farrell would have been still alive here and probably nobody would have actually heard of uh, Shane O'Farrell if it wasn't a systematic uh, catalogue of failures by all parties, uh, the police and the courts. Um, and what the family have always looked for is accountability, truth and justice. And they are very, very simple narratives. And I don't think by this scope and exercise it will um, get to that truth. And the truth will only come out through a public inquiry. Um, and I think that will come out uh, after the scoping exercise. It will, it will come out that you need a public inquiry in relation to this unnecessary death of Jane O'Farrell. Smith. Thank you, Minister, on the 12th of June in 2018, Fianna Fáil introduced a motion to the Dáil here to call for a commission of investigation into the circumstances surrounding the death of Shane O'Farrell in Cartmacross Cross in County Monaghan back in 2011. Lucia O'Farrell, her husband, her daughters have fought tirelessly to seek justice for their son and brother. Minister, the state has failed them in the manner in which Shane's death was investigated. The state has failed them in the manner in which Shane's death was prosecuted. And the state has continued to fail the O'Farrell family in the manner in which the complaints surrounding the investigation and the prosecution is being handled by GSOC. I am very hopeful, Minister, and this is to give you some sense of credit too, that by this scope of inquiry, while we understand from Lucia and her family they were disappointed about a non-engagement, if you like, with them in terms of the, the, the terms of reference for this scope of inquiry, but I would be hopeful, Minister, that it does indicate that you will give full support to the Oireachtas uh, vote which happened here last year in terms of the establishment of that public inquiry. Minister. I know the circumstances surrounding the tragic and untimely death of Shane O'Farrell are of concern to all members of this House. Uh, indeed, the case has been discussed here on many occasions, um, along with the subsequent investigations that have taken place into the events surrounding this dreadful accident. 
Shane O'Farrell was a much loved son and brother, and his death has clearly been devastating for his family, to whom I once again extend my sincere condolences. The House will recall uh, the outcome of the GSOC criminal investigation of complaints related to the tragedy. Members may not be aware that GSOC recently completed its disciplinary investigation. This has resulted in a recommendation to the Garda Commissioner that disciplinary action be taken <coughs> in relation to three members of Angarda Síochána. Indeed, clearly, this is a matter uh, for the Garda Commissioner uh, and the Garda Commissioner alone. Uh, it will now take its proper course. Uh, I don't propose to comment further on that. In June 18, Deputy Neve Smith has says, the Dáil passed a motion calling for a public inquiry into the death of Shane O'Farrell. The motion called for the actions of the Gardaí, the DPP, the courts, GSOC, to be examined as part of such an inquiry. As Minister for Justice and Equality, I am particularly cognizant of the independence of each of these bodies in the criminal justice system. It is imperative that their independence is fully respected. When the Dáil passed its motion, I began examining how we could give effect to the intention of the House without undermining the work of GSOC. My officials began to explore options with the Attorney General. At the earliest opportunity, following the completion of the GSOC disciplinary investigation at the end of January, I appointed a respected and very experienced former judge of the District Court, Judge Gerard Houghton, to carry out a scoping exercise into the circumstances of the death of Shane O'Farrell including the criminal prosecution arising from the road traffic incident, the independent review mechanism examination of the case, and the investigations by Garda Síochána Ombudsman Commission. I met with the O'Farrell family two weeks ago to outline my proposals to them. While they objected to the process of a scoping exercise, they did agree to consider the proposed terms of reference and to engage with Judge Houghton on the terms of reference. I want to thank them for that. I'm aware that Judge Houghton has already contacted the family to commence that very important engagement. It's open, and I stress this, Count Corla, it's open to Judge Houghton to propose changes to the terms of reference to me. Following his review, Judge Houghton will advise me on any remaining unanswered questions which should be the subject of a further inquiry or investigation, and if so, the most appropriate manner in which that investigation might take place. I want to state, Count Corla, very clear terms. Neither myself nor the government is opposed to the possibility of a further inquiry into this case, if that is what Judge Houghton recommends. I have not placed any restriction on Judge Houghton in that regard. I too, as indeed do all of my government colleagues and everybody on this side of the House, wish to see questions answered to the satisfaction of the O'Farrell family. I think we're all in agreement on that, and I say this in the presence of the Chair um, of the Justice Committee, who has an interest in this issue also. I want to thank the deputies for giving me the opportunity to set out how I propose to proceed in relation to this tragic case, but I too want to deal with it in such a way as to find answers to questions that remain unanswered today. Does revise the terms of reference because I think there are difficulties with the terms of reference such as they are. They take the approach yet again of examine the bits that haven't already been investigated, notwithstanding the fact that the family are already dissatisfied with a number of those investigations, in particular the GSOC investigation. Uh, it is a piecemeal approach. Terms one and two, again, as I say, they're very focused on what areas of failure have not already been examined. Terms three to six very much hinge on those first two terms. So I hope they get just I hope that this exercise will allow them to get justice, but I also hope that they revise the terms of reference. You should have consulted the family on the terms of references before publishing them. Thanks, uh, I can. Well, well, Minister, I mean, if, if, the, if Judge Houghton came back and, and, and asked that you go, to go straight for a, pub, a full uh, public inquiry under the 2004 legislation, would you actually do that? Uh, I mean, the, the, the GSOC investigation, I think, it has been very unsatisfactory. It's four years, or is it six years? Um, and, and the issues around disciplinary action, we, we know very little about. Um, it, like, we need justice uh, for Shane, uh, for his mother, Lucia, for the whole family. Uh, there isn't really a need for a scoping uh, inquiry. We, we should be able to go, proceed and just go for a commission of investigation uh, to, to this tragic death of this very talented, very talented and highly regarded young man uh, which has decimated um, his community and his family. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken Minister, as 
my other colleagues have said, this has become so protracted and so kind of dragged out that it's compelling and compounding the family of the O'Farrell family. And as I said, and as other my colleagues said, they've always wanted tr tr truth and justice. And hopefully, if my question to you, Minister, is if George Horton, um, will he compel you or will you be compelled to call for a public inquiry if he calls for a public inquiry? Minister, it is clear that the GSOC inquiry has been a total failure for the O'Farrell family. It has been six years on since the process began and the O'Farrell family have no more answers than they did when the process started. The only thing that can be gleaned from the report is that the Government needs to step up and establish the Commission of Investigation so that we as a nation learn from this awful tragedy and nothing like this ever happens again. Cool. I have listened very carefully to the points raised by Deputies O'Leary and Bruin and Kenny and Deputy Smith. Uh, I've already mentioned the independence of the various criminal justice bodies who were engaged in various aspects of the O'Farrell case. But I think it's absolutely critical that, that I make it clear that any legal difficulties that may arise in seeking to look at actions by the courts, which are independent under the Constitution, and the Office of the DPP, and GSA, which are both independent under law, we must have regard for the constitutional separation of powers where the courts are concerned. Where the Director of Public Prosecutions is concerned, the law specifically states uh, and is designed to prevent inappropriate interference with the office, particularly in cases where there are prosecutorial decisions being concerned. Any inquiry, therefore, must at all times respect these boundaries. I have, as I've mentioned, initiated a scoping exercise to look at the various matters. This is a reasonable and responsible approach to take. There are various precedents where scoping exercises have been carried out in the past, prior to the setting up of, of inquiries or tribunals. It's good governance to allow a scoping exercise by a legal expert to determine the net issues that may require further examination. Indeed, the exercise on the part of Judge Houghton will also be uh, charged with the responsibility of reviewing changes that have already been made to law and practice and procedure in relation to the administration of bail and bench warrants and the extent to which they have or have not addressed any gaps in the systems since the death of Shane O'Farr. So in conclusion, let me reiterate, I'm acutely conscious that at the heart of this tragedy is a family in pain. I'm very much aware of the fact that this family are searching for answers. They have the sympathy and support of the government and everybody in this House. And I want to once again extend my sincere condolences to the O'Farrell family, assure the House and all of the deputies who have raised this issue again today that a process is firmly in place to examine how best to give effect to the Dáil motion that was passed.